So what do we need to do to meet Gore's challenge? We actually need to start thinking about it as an energy modernization challenge. How do we get the technologies that we need to the point that we can afford to deploy them on the scale that we need to deploy them to achieve dramatic transformation of our energy economy? And I think that's where, frankly, everybody still gets stuck, is uh, lots of ideas about how this is going to happen. Most of them sort of involve one form or another of magical thinking. If we just put a price on carbon, the market will sort of magically deliver this technology. If we just establish a descending cap, the market will magically deliver this technology. If we just establish renewable portfolio standards and require by law that a certain percentage of energy be deployed that is clean energy, that will result in the market magically going and creating these technologies. Unfortunately, none of those versions of magical market thinking will succeed. And the reason is that the technologies that we need still cost vastly more than the conventional energy sources that we have. The result of that is that there are just fundamental limitations in what political scientists call a Politi the political economy to deploy those new technologies. So the first thing we have to do is identify strategies to dramatically drive down the cost of these energy technologies. Uh, and that is not going to be accomplished by markets or the private sector primarily. It is primarily going to be accomplished by the public sector in the same way that we have driven almost every major transformative technological revolution we've ever had through the public sector. We need to invest dramatically greater resources in every stage of the technology innovation process, from basic research and development to demonstrating new technologies in the laboratory to deploying those technologies in ways that create significant learning curves and drive down the real deployed costs of the alternative technologies that we need private sector entrepreneurs and private sector investors are loath to invest enough to deploy those technologies broadly enough that we actually start to see really dramatic reductions in the cost of those technologies. It's a critical public good and we need to provide public resources and a public uh, framework for doing that. It's what used to be called industrial policy which over the last three decades of obedience to markets as the great uh, sort of driver of all things good and all innovation has become sort of a dirty word. But in this case, what we need is industrial policy to directly procure the technologies we need and do it with specific standards that will uh, drive entrepreneurs, uh, inventors, uh, small companies, uh, to really work their way down the cost curves that are necessary to get these technologies to prices where we can actually afford to broadly deploy them. That's inc critical not only for meeting Gore's challenge of transforming the American energy economy, but it's critical trans to transforming the global energy economy. Most of the growth in carbon emissions and most of the growth in energy use over the next century is going to come not from the United States or other developed countries, but from the developing world, from China and India, from Latin America and Africa. That's where the energy growth will come from. That's where the growth in emissions will come from. So for any kind of, of strategy to succeed, we need to dramatically drive down the real deployed, unsubsidized cost of these low carbon energy alternatives to the point that they are actually competitive with conventional energy sources, not only here in the United States, but in places like China and India, where people have very little ability to pay significantly more for their, uh, for their energy. So that's what it will take to broadly define, get to Gore's goal. Whether we get there in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years, I actually don't really care as long as we get there as quickly as possible and we do it in a way that the energy technologies that result from it 
are serious alternatives not only for us here in the United States, but for 7 billion of us all over the world. And for us to live on a sustainable planet, it's going to require a lot more energy that is not only cheap, it's also clean. That's the prize. That's what Gore's plan, Obama's plan, anybody's plan that's serious about transforming the global energy economy and dealing with climate change needs to do. How's that? Thank you.